Now the Lord called to Moses and spoke to him from the tent of meeting, saying, Speak to the sons of Israel and say to them, When any one of you brings an offering to the Lord, you shall bring your offering of livestock from the herd or the flock. If his offering is a burnt offering from the herd, he shall offer a male without defect, he shall offer it at the doorway of the tent of meeting, so that he may be accepted before the Lord. And he shall lay his hand on the head of the burnt offering, so that it may be accepted for him to make atonement on his behalf. Then he shall slaughter the bull before the Lord, and Aaron's sons the priests shall offer up the blood and sprinkle the blood around on the altar that is at the doorway of the tent of meeting. He shall then skin the burnt offering and cut it into its pieces. And the sons of Aaron the priest shall put fire on the altar and arrange wood on the fire. Then Aaron's sons the priests shall arrange the pieces, with the head and the suet, on the wood which is on the fire that is on the altar. Its entrails, however, and its legs he shall wash with water. And the priest shall offer all of it up in smoke on the altar as a burnt offering, an offering by fire as a soothing aroma to the Lord. But if his offering is from the flock, either from the sheep or from the goats, as a burnt offering, he shall offer a male without defect. And he shall slaughter it on the side of the altar northward before the Lord, and Aaron's sons the priests shall sprinkle its blood around on the altar. He shall then cut it into its pieces with its head and its suet, and the priest shall arrange them on the wood which is on the fire that is on the altar. The entrails, however, and the legs he shall wash with water. And the priest shall offer all of it, and offer it up in smoke on the altar, it is a burnt offering, an offering by fire of a soothing aroma to the Lord. But if his offering to the Lord is a burnt offering of birds, then he shall bring his offering from the turtle doves or from young doves. The priest shall bring it to the altar, and pinch off its head, and offer it up in smoke on the altar, and its blood is to be drained out on the side of the altar. He shall also remove its craw with its feathers and throw it beside the altar eastward, to the place of the fatty ashes. Then he shall tear it by its wings, but shall not sever it. And the priest shall offer it up in smoke on the altar, on the wood which is on the fire, it is a burnt offering, an offering by fire of a soothing aroma to the Lord. Now when anyone presents a grain offering as an offering to the Lord, his offering shall be of fine flour, and he shall pour oil on it and put frankincense on it. He shall then bring it to Aaron's sons the priests, and he shall take from it his handful of its fine flour and of its oil, with all of its frankincense. And the priest shall offer it up in smoke as its memorial portion on the altar, an offering by fire of a soothing aroma to the Lord. The remainder of the grain offering belongs to Aaron and his sons, a most holy part of the offerings to the Lord by fire. Now when you bring an offering of a grain offering baked in an oven, it shall be unleavened cakes of fine flour mixed with oil, or unleavened wafers spread with oil. And if your offering is a grain offering made on the griddle, it shall be of fine flour, unleavened, mixed with oil. You shall break it into bits and pour oil on it, it is a grain offering. Now if your offering is a grain offering made in a pan, it shall be made of fine flour with oil. When you bring in the grain offering which is made of these things to the Lord, it shall be presented to the priest, and he shall bring it to the altar. The priest then shall take up from the grain offering its memorial portion, and shall offer it up in smoke on the altar as an offering by fire of a soothing aroma to the Lord. The remainder of the grain offering belongs to Aaron and his sons, a most holy part of the offerings to the Lord by fire. No grain offering, which you bring to the Lord, shall be made with leaven, for you shall not offer up in smoke any leaven or any honey as an offering by fire to the Lord. As an offering of first fruits you shall bring them to the Lord, but they shall not ascend as a soothing aroma on the altar. 
Every grain offering of yours, moreover, you shall season with salt, so that the salt of the covenant of your God will not be lacking from your grain offering, with all your offerings you shall offer salt. Also if you bring a grain offering of early ripened things to the Lord, you shall bring fresh heads of grain roasted in the fire, crushed grain of new growth, for the grain offering of your early ripened produce. You shall then put oil on it and place incense on it, it is a grain offering. Then the priest shall offer up in smoke its memorial portion, part of its crushed grain and its oil with all its incense as an offering by fire to the Lord. Now if his offering is a sacrifice of peace offerings, if he is going to offer from the herd, whether male or female, he shall offer it without defect before the Lord. And he shall lay his hand on the head of his offering and slaughter it at the doorway of the tent of meeting, and Aaron's sons the priests shall sprinkle the blood around on the altar. From the sacrifice of the peace offerings he shall then present an offering by fire to the Lord, the fat that covers the entrails and all the fat that is on the entrails. And the two kidneys with the fat that is on them, which is on the loins, and the lobe of the liver, which he shall remove with the kidneys. Then Aaron's sons shall offer it up in smoke on the altar on the burnt offering, which is on the wood that is on the fire, it is an offering by fire of a soothing aroma to the Lord. But if his offering for a sacrifice of peace offerings to the Lord is from the flock, he shall offer it, male or female, without defect. If he is going to offer a lamb for his offering, then he shall offer it before the Lord. And he shall lay his hand on the head of his offering and slaughter it in front of the tent of meeting, and Aaron's sons shall sprinkle its blood around on the altar. From the sacrifice of peace offerings he shall then bring as an offering by fire to the Lord, its fat, the entire fat tail which he shall remove close to the backbone, the fat that covers the entrails, and all the fat that is on the entrails. And the two kidneys with the fat that is on them, which is on the loins, and the lobe of the liver, which he shall remove with the kidneys. Then the priest shall offer it up in smoke on the altar as food, an offering by fire to the Lord. Now if his offering is a goat, then he shall offer it before the Lord. And he shall lay his hand on its head and slaughter it in front of the tent of meeting, and the sons of Aaron shall sprinkle its blood around on the altar. From it he shall present his offering as an offering by fire to the Lord, the fat that covers the entrails and all the fat that is on the entrails. And the two kidneys with the fat that is on them, which is on the loins, and the lobe of the liver, which he shall remove with the kidneys. The priest shall offer them up in smoke on the altar as food, an offering by fire as a soothing aroma, all fat is the Lord's. It is a permanent statute throughout your generations in all your dwelling places, you shall not eat any fat or any blood. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the sons of Israel, saying, If a person sins unintentionally in any of the things which the Lord has commanded not to be done, and commits any of them. If the anointed priest sins so as to bring guilt on the people, then he is to offer to the Lord a bull without defect as a sin offering for his sin which he has committed. He shall bring the bull to the doorway of the tent of meeting before the Lord, and he shall lay his hand on the head of the bull and slaughter the bull before the Lord. Then the anointed priest is to take some of the blood of the bull and bring it to the tent of meeting. And the priest shall dip his finger in the blood and sprinkle some of the blood seven times before the Lord, in front of the veil of the sanctuary. The priest shall also put some of the blood on the horns of the altar of fragrant incense which is before the Lord in the tent of meeting, and all the rest of the blood of the bull he shall pour out at the base of the altar of burnt offering, which is at the doorway of the tent of meeting. And he shall remove from it all the fat of the bull of the sin offering, the fat that covers the entrails, and all the fat which is on the entrails. And the two kidneys with the fat that is on them, which is on the loins, and the lobe of the liver, 
which he shall remove with the kidneys. Just as it is removed from the ox of the sacrifice of peace offerings, and the priest is to offer them up in smoke on the altar of burnt offering. But the hide of the bull and all its flesh, along with its head, its legs, its entrails, and its refuse. That is, all the rest of the bull, he is to bring out to a clean place outside the camp where the fatty ashes are poured out, and burn it on wood with fire, where the fatty ashes are poured out it shall be burned. Now if the entire congregation of Israel does wrong unintentionally and the matter escapes the notice of the assembly, and they commit any of the things which the Lord has commanded not to be done, and they become guilty, 14 When the sin which they have committed becomes known, then the assembly shall offer a bull of the herd as a sin offering and bring it in front of the tent of meeting. Then the elders of the congregation shall lay their hands on the head of the bull before the Lord, and the bull shall be slaughtered before the Lord. Then the anointed priest is to bring some of the blood of the bull to the tent of meeting. And the priest shall dip his finger in the blood and sprinkle it seven times before the Lord, in front of the veil. He shall then put some of the blood on the horns of the altar which is before the Lord in the tent of meeting, and all the rest of the blood he shall pour out at the base of the altar of burnt offering which is at the doorway of the tent of meeting. And he shall remove all its fat from it and offer it up in smoke on the altar. He shall also do with the bull just as he did with the bull of the sin offering, he shall do the same with it. So the priest shall make atonement for them, and they will be forgiven. Then he is to bring the bull out to a place outside the camp and burn it just as he burned the first bull, it is the sin offering for the assembly. When a leader sins and unintentionally does any of the things which the Lord his God has commanded not to be done, and he becomes guilty. If his sin which he has committed is made known to him, he shall bring as his offering a goat, a male without defect. And he shall lay his hand on the head of the male goat and slaughter it in the place where they slaughter the burnt offering before the Lord, it is a sin offering. Then the priest is to take some of the blood of the sin offering with his finger and put it on the horns of the altar of burnt offering, and the rest of its blood he shall pour out at the base of the altar of burnt offering. And he shall offer all its fat up in smoke on the altar as in the case of the fat of the sacrifice of peace offerings. So the priest shall make atonement for him regarding his sin, and he will be forgiven. Now if any one of the common people sins unintentionally by doing any of the things which the Lord has commanded not to be done, and becomes guilty. If his sin which he has committed is made known to him, then he shall bring as his offering a goat, a female without defect, for his sin which he has committed. And he shall lay his hand on the head of the sin offering and slaughter the sin offering at the place of the burnt offering. The priest shall then take some of its blood with his finger and put it on the horns of the altar of burnt offering, and all the rest of its blood he shall pour out at the base of the altar. Then he shall remove all its fat, just as the fat was removed from the sacrifice of peace offerings, and the priest shall offer it up in smoke on the altar as a soothing aroma to the Lord. So the priest shall make atonement for him, and he will be forgiven. But if he brings a lamb as his offering for a sin offering, he shall bring a female without defect. And he shall lay his hand on the head of the sin offering and slaughter it as a sin offering in the place where they slaughter the burnt offering. And the priest is to take some of the blood of the sin offering with his finger and put it on the horns of the altar of burnt offering, and all the rest of its blood he shall pour out at the base of the altar. Then he shall remove all its fat, just as the fat of the lamb is removed from the sacrifice of the peace offerings, and the priest shall offer it up in smoke on the altar, on the offerings by fire to the Lord. So the priest shall make atonement for him regarding his sin which he has committed, and he will be forgiven. Now if a person sins after he hears a public order to testify when he is a witness, 
whether he has seen or otherwise known, if he does not tell it, then he will bear his punishment. Or if a person touches any unclean thing, whether a carcass of an unclean animal, or the carcass of unclean cattle, or a carcass of unclean swarming things, though it is hidden from him and he is unclean, then he will be guilty. Or if he touches human uncleanness, of whatever sort his uncleanness may be with which he becomes unclean, and it is hidden from him, and then he comes to know it, he will be guilty. Or if a person swears thoughtlessly with his lips to do evil or to do good, in whatever matter people speak thoughtlessly with an oath, and it is hidden from him, and then he comes to know it, he will be guilty of one of these things. So it shall be when he becomes guilty of one of these things, that he shall confess that in which he has sinned. He shall also bring his guilt offering to the Lord for his sin which he has committed, a female from the flock, a lamb or a goat as a sin offering. So the priest shall make atonement on his behalf for his sin. But if he cannot afford a lamb, then he shall bring to the Lord his guilt offering for that in which he has sinned, two turtle doves or two young doves, one as a sin offering and the other as a burnt offering. He shall bring them to the priest, who shall first offer that which is for the sin offering, and shall pinch off its head at the front of its neck, but he shall not sever it. He shall also sprinkle some of the blood of the sin offering on the side of the altar, while the rest of the blood shall be drained out at the base of the altar, it is a sin offering. The second he shall then prepare as a burnt offering according to the ordinance. So the priest shall make atonement on his behalf for his sin which he has committed, and it will be forgiven him. But if his means are insufficient for two turtle doves or two young doves, then for his offering for that which he has sinned, he shall bring the tenth of an ephah of fine flour as a sin offering, he shall not put oil on it or place incense on it, for it is a sin offering. He shall bring it to the priest, and the priest shall take his handful of it as its memorial portion and offer it up in smoke on the altar, with the offerings of the Lord by fire, it is a sin offering. So the priest shall make atonement for him concerning his sin which he has committed from one of these, and it will be forgiven him, then the rest shall become the priests, like the grain offering. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, If a person acts unfaithfully and sins unintentionally against the Lord's holy things, then he shall bring his guilt offering to the Lord, a ram without defect from the flock, according to your assessment in silver by shekels, in terms of the shekel of the sanctuary, as a guilt offering. And he shall make restitution for that which he has sinned against the holy thing, and shall add to it a fifth part of it and give it to the priest. The priest shall then make atonement for him with the ram of the guilt offering, and it will be forgiven him. Now if a person sins and does any of the things which the Lord has commanded not to be done, though he was unaware, he is still guilty and shall bear his punishment. He is then to bring to the priest a ram without defect from the flock, according to your assessment, as a guilt offering. So the priest shall make atonement for him concerning his sin which he committed unintentionally and did not know it, and it will be forgiven him. It is a guilt offering, he was certainly guilty before the Lord. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, when a person sins and acts unfaithfully against the Lord, and disavows the rightful claim of his neighbor regarding a deposit or a security entrusted to him, or regarding robbery, or he has extorted from his neighbor, or has found what was lost and lied about it and sworn falsely, so that he sins regarding any of the things that people do. Then it shall be, when he sins and becomes guilty, that he shall restore what he took by robbery or acquired by extortion, or the deposit which was entrusted to him, or the lost property which he found. Or anything about which he swore falsely, he shall make restitution for it in full and add to it a fifth more. He shall give it to the one to whom it belongs on the day he presents his guilt offering. 
Then he shall bring to the priest his guilt offering to the Lord, a ram without defect from the flock, according to your assessment, as a guilt offering. And the priest shall make atonement for him before the Lord, and he will be forgiven for any one of the things which he may have done to incur guilt. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Command Aaron and his sons, saying, This is the law for the burnt offering. The burnt offering itself shall remain on the hearth on the altar all night until the morning, and the fire on the altar is to be kept burning on it. The priest is to put on his linen robe, and he shall put on linen undergarments next to his body, and he shall take up the fatty ashes to which the fire reduces the burnt offering on the altar and place them beside the altar. Then he shall take off his garments and put on other garments, and carry the fatty ashes outside the camp to a clean place. The fire on the altar shall be kept burning on it. It shall not go out, but the priest shall burn wood on it every morning, and he shall lay out the burnt offering on it, and offer up in smoke the fat portions of the peace offerings on it. Fire shall be kept burning continually on the altar, it is not to go out. Now this is the law of the grain offering, the sons of Aaron shall present it before the Lord in front of the altar. Then one of them shall lift up from it a handful of the fine flour of the grain offering, with its oil and all the incense that is on the grain offering, and he shall offer it up in smoke on the altar, a soothing aroma, as its memorial offering to the Lord. And Aaron and his sons are to eat what is left of it. It shall be eaten as unleavened cakes in a holy place, they are to eat it in the courtyard of the tent of meeting. It shall not be baked with leaven. I have given it as their share for my offerings by fire, it is most holy, like the sin offering and the guilt offering. Every male among the sons of Aaron may eat it, it is a permanent ordinance throughout your generations, from the offerings by fire to the Lord. Whoever touches them will become consecrated. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, This is the offering which Aaron and his sons are to present to the Lord on the day when he is anointed, the tenth of an ephah of fine flour as a regular grain offering, half of it in the morning and half of it in the evening. It shall be prepared with oil on a griddle. When it is well stirred, you shall bring it. You shall present the grain offering in baked pieces as a soothing aroma to the Lord. The anointed priest who will be in his place among his sons shall offer it. By a permanent ordinance it shall be entirely offered up in smoke to the Lord. So every grain offering of the priest shall be burned entirely. It shall not be eaten. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to Aaron and to his sons, saying, This is the law of the sin offering, in the place where the burnt offering is slaughtered, the sin offering shall be slaughtered before the Lord, it is most holy. The priest who offers it for sin shall eat it. It shall be eaten in a holy place, in the courtyard of the tent of meeting. Whoever touches its flesh will become consecrated, and when any of its blood spatters on a garment, you shall wash what spattered on it in a holy place. Also the earthenware vessel in which it was boiled shall be broken, and if it was boiled in a bronze vessel, then it shall be scoured and rinsed in water. Every male among the priests may eat it, it is most holy. But no sin offering of which any of the blood is brought into the tent of meeting to make atonement in the holy place shall be eaten, it shall be burned with fire. Now this is the law of the guilt offering, it is most holy. In the place where they slaughter the burnt offering they are to slaughter the guilt offering, and the priest shall sprinkle its blood around on the altar. Then he shall offer from it all its fat, the fat tail and the fat that covers the entrails, and the two kidneys with the fat that is on them, which is on the loins, and he shall remove the lobe on the liver with the kidneys. The priest shall offer them up in smoke on the altar as an offering by fire to the Lord, it is a guilt offering. Every male among the priests may eat it. 
It shall be eaten in a holy place, it is most holy. 7 The guilt offering is like the sin offering, there is one law for them. The priest who makes atonement with it shall have it. Also the priest who presents anyone's burnt offering, that priest shall have for himself the hide of the burnt offering which he has presented. Likewise, every grain offering that is baked in the oven and everything prepared in a pan or on a griddle shall belong to the priest who presents it. Every grain offering, mixed with oil or dry, shall belong to all the sons of Aaron, to all alike. Now this is the law of the sacrifice of peace offerings which shall be presented to the Lord. If he offers it by way of thanksgiving, then along with the sacrifice of thanksgiving he shall offer unleavened cakes mixed with oil, and unleavened wafers spread with oil, and cakes of well-stirred fine flour mixed with oil. With the sacrifice of his peace offerings for thanksgiving, he shall present his offering with cakes of leavened bread. Of this he shall present one of every offering as a contribution to the Lord, it shall belong to the priest who sprinkles the blood of the peace offerings. Now as for the flesh of the sacrifice of his thanksgiving peace offerings, it shall be eaten on the day of his offering, he shall not leave any of it over until morning. But if the sacrifice of his offering is a vow or a voluntary offering, it shall be eaten on the day that he offers his sacrifice, and on the next day what is left of it may be eaten. But what is left over from the flesh of the sacrifice on the third day shall be burned with fire. So if any of the flesh of the sacrifice of his peace offerings is ever eaten on the third day, he who offers it will not be accepted, and it will not be credited to him. It will be an unclean thing, and the person who eats it shall bear his punishment. Also the flesh that touches anything unclean shall not be eaten, it shall be burned with fire. As for other flesh, anyone who is clean may eat such flesh. 20 But the person who eats the flesh of the sacrifice of peace offerings which belong to the Lord, when he is unclean, that person shall be cut off from his people. When anyone touches anything unclean, whether human uncleanness, or an unclean animal, or any unclean detestable thing, and eats of the flesh of the sacrifice of peace offerings which belong to the Lord, that person shall be cut off from his people. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the sons of Israel, saying, You shall not eat any fat from an ox, a sheep, or a goat. Also the fat of an animal which dies and the fat of an animal torn by animals may be put to any other use, but you certainly are not to eat it. For whoever eats the fat of the animal from which an offering by fire is offered to the Lord, the person who eats it shall also be cut off from his people. And you are not to eat any blood, either of bird or animal, in any of your dwellings. Any person who eats any blood, that person shall also be cut off from his people. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the sons of Israel, saying, he who offers the sacrifice of his peace offerings to the Lord shall bring his offering to the Lord from the sacrifice of his peace offerings. His own hands are to bring offerings by fire to the Lord. He shall bring the fat with the breast, so that the breast may be presented as a wave offering before the Lord. And the priest shall offer up the fat in smoke on the altar, but the breast shall belong to Aaron and to his sons. And you shall give the right thigh to the priest as a contribution from the sacrifices of your peace offerings. The one among the sons of Aaron who offers the blood of the peace offerings and the fat, the right thigh shall be his as his portion. For I have taken from the sons of Israel the breast of the wave offering and the thigh of the contribution from the sacrifices of their peace offerings, and have given them to Aaron the priest and to his sons as their allotted portion forever from the sons of Israel. This is the allotment to Aaron and the allotment to his sons from the offerings by fire to the Lord, on that day when he presented them to serve as priests to the Lord. 
These the Lord had commanded to be given them from the sons of Israel on the day that he anointed them. It is their allotted portion forever throughout their generations. This is the law of the burnt offering, the grain offering, the sin offering and the guilt offering, and the ordination offering and the sacrifice of peace offerings. Which the Lord commanded Moses on Mount Sinai on the day that he commanded the sons of Israel to present their offerings to the Lord in the wilderness of Sinai. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Take Aaron and his sons with him, and the garments and the anointing oil, and the bull of the sin offering, and the two rams and the basket of unleavened bread. And assemble all the congregation at the doorway of the tent of meeting. So Moses did just as the Lord commanded him. When the congregation was assembled at the doorway of the tent of meeting, Moses said to the congregation, This is the thing which the Lord has commanded us to do. Then Moses had Aaron and his sons come near, and he washed them with water. Then he put the tunic on Aaron and wrapped his waist with the sash, and clothed him with the robe and put the ephod on him and he wrapped his waist with the artistic band of the ephod, with which he fitted it to him. He then placed the breastpiece on him, and in the breastpiece he put the urim and the thummim. He also placed the turban on his head, and on the turban, at its front, he placed the golden plate, the holy crown, just as the Lord had commanded Moses. Moses then took the anointing oil and anointed the tabernacle and everything that was in it, and consecrated them. He also sprinkled some of it on the altar seven times and anointed the altar and all its utensils, and the basin and its stand, to consecrate them. Then he poured some of the anointing oil on Aaron's head and anointed him, to consecrate him. Next Moses had Aaron's sons come near, and he clothed them with tunics and wrapped their waists with sashes, and bound caps on them, just as the Lord had commanded Moses. Then he brought the bull of the sin offering, and Aaron and his sons laid their hands on the head of the bull of the sin offering. Next Moses slaughtered it and took the blood and with his finger put some of it around on the horns of the altar, and purified the altar. Then he poured out the rest of the blood at the base of the altar and consecrated it, to make atonement for it. He also took all the fat that was on the entrails and the lobe of the liver, and the two kidneys and their fat, and Moses offered it up in smoke on the altar. But the bull and its hide, its flesh, and its refuse he burned in the fire outside the camp, just as the Lord had commanded Moses. Then he presented the ram of the burnt offering, and Aaron and his sons laid their hands on the head of the ram. And Moses slaughtered it and sprinkled the blood around on the altar. When he had cut the ram into its pieces, Moses offered up the head and the pieces and the suet in smoke. After he had washed the entrails and the legs with water, Moses offered up the whole ram in smoke on the altar. It was a burnt offering for a soothing aroma, it was an offering by fire to the Lord, just as the Lord had commanded Moses. Then he presented the second ram, the ram of ordination, and Aaron and his sons laid their hands on the head of the ram. And Moses slaughtered it and took some of its blood and put it on the lobe of Aaron's right ear, and on the thumb of his right hand and on the big toe of his right foot. He also had Aaron's sons come near, and Moses put some of the blood on the lobe of their right ear, and on the thumb of their right hand and on the big toe of their right foot. Moses then sprinkled the rest of the blood around on the altar. He then took the fat, and the fat tail, and all the fat that was on the entrails, and the lobe of the liver, the two kidneys and their fat, and the right thigh. And from the basket of unleavened bread that was before the Lord, he took one unleavened cake and one cake of bread mixed with oil and one wafer, and placed them on the portions of fat and on the right thigh. He then put all these on the hands of Aaron and on the hands of his sons, and presented them as a wave offering before the Lord. 
Then Moses took them from their hands and offered them up in smoke on the altar with the burnt offering. They were an ordination offering for a soothing aroma, it was an offering by fire to the Lord. Moses also took the breast and presented it as a wave offering before the Lord, it was Moses' portion of the ram of ordination, just as the Lord had commanded Moses. So Moses took some of the anointing oil and some of the blood which was on the altar, and sprinkled it on Aaron, on his garments, on his sons, and on the garments of his sons with him, and he consecrated Aaron, his garments, and his sons, and the garments of his sons with him. Then Moses said to Aaron and to his sons, Boil the flesh at the doorway of the tent of meeting, and eat it there together with the bread which is in the basket of the ordination offering, just as I commanded, saying, Aaron and his sons shall eat it. And the remainder of the flesh and of the bread you shall burn in the fire. And you shall not go outside the doorway of the tent of meeting for seven days, until the day that the period of your ordination is fulfilled, for he will ordain you through seven days. The Lord has commanded us to do as has been done this day, to make atonement on your behalf. At the doorway of the tent of meeting, moreover, you shall remain day and night for seven days and fulfill your duty to the Lord, so that you will not die, for so I have been commanded. Aaron and his sons did all the things which the Lord had commanded through Moses. Now it came about on the eighth day that Moses called Aaron and his sons and the elders of Israel. And he said to Aaron, Take for yourself a calf, a bull, as a sin offering and a ram as a burnt offering, both without defect, and offer them before the Lord. Then you shall speak to the sons of Israel, saying, Take a male goat as a sin offering, and a calf and a lamb, both one year old, without defect, as a burnt offering, and an ox and a ram for peace offerings, to sacrifice before the Lord, and a grain offering mixed with oil, for today the Lord will appear to you. So they took what Moses had commanded to the front of the tent of meeting, and the whole congregation came near and stood before the Lord. And Moses said, This is the thing which the Lord has commanded you to do, so that the glory of the Lord may appear to you. 7 Moses then said to Aaron, Come near to the altar and offer your sin offering and your burnt offering, so that you may make atonement for yourself and for the people, then make the offering for the people, so that you may make atonement for them, just as the Lord has commanded. So Aaron came near to the altar and slaughtered the calf of the sin offering which was for himself. Aaron's sons then presented the blood to him, and he dipped his finger in the blood and put some on the horns of the altar, and poured out the rest of the blood at the base of the altar. The fat and the kidneys and the lobe of the liver of the sin offering he then offered up in smoke on the altar, just as the Lord had commanded Moses. The flesh and the hide, however, he burned with fire outside the camp. Then he slaughtered the burnt offering, and Aaron's sons brought the blood to him, and he sprinkled it around on the altar. They brought the burnt offering to him in pieces, with the head, and he offered them up in smoke on the altar. He also washed the entrails and the legs, and offered them up in smoke with the burnt offering on the altar. Then he presented the people's offering, and took the goat of the sin offering which was for the people, and slaughtered it and offered it for sin, like the first. He also presented the burnt offering, and offered it according to the ordinance. Next he presented the grain offering, and filled his hand with some of it and offered it up in smoke on the altar, besides the burnt offering of the morning. Then he slaughtered the ox and the ram, the sacrifice of peace offerings which was for the people, and Aaron's sons brought the blood to him, and he sprinkled it around on the altar. As for the portions of fat from the ox and from the ram, the fat tail, the fat covering, the kidneys, and the lobe of the liver, twenty they now placed the portions of fat on the breasts, and he offered them up in smoke on the altar. But the breasts and the right thigh Aaron presented as a wave offering before the Lord, 
just as Moses had commanded. Then Aaron lifted up his hands toward the people and blessed them, and he stepped down after making the sin offering, the burnt offering, and the peace offerings. And Moses and Aaron went into the tent of meeting. When they came out and blessed the people, the glory of the Lord appeared to all the people. Then fire went out from the Lord and consumed the burnt offering and the portions of fat on the altar, and when all the people saw it, they shouted and fell face downward. Now Nadab and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, took their respective fire pans, and after putting fire in them, placed incense on the fire and offered strange fire before the Lord, which he had not commanded them. And fire came out from the presence of the Lord and consumed them, and they died before the Lord. Then Moses said to Aaron, It is what the Lord spoke, saying, By those who come near me I will be treated as holy, and before all the people I will be honored. So Aaron, therefore, kept silent. Moses called also to Mishael and Elzaphan, the sons of Aaron's uncle Uzziel, and said to them, Come forward, carry your relatives away from the front of the sanctuary to an area outside of the camp. So they came forward and carried them, still in their tunics, to an area outside the camp, just as Moses had said. Then Moses said to Aaron and to his sons Eleazar and Ithamar, Do not uncover your heads nor tear your clothes, so that you do not die and he does not become wrathful against all the congregation. But your kinsmen, the entire house of Israel, shall weep for the burning which the Lord has brought about. You shall not even go out from the doorway of the tent of meeting, or you will die, for the Lord's anointing oil is upon you. So they did according to the word of Moses. The Lord then spoke to Aaron, saying, Do not drink wine or strong drink, neither you nor your sons with you, when you come into the tent of meeting, so that you do not die, it is a permanent statute throughout your generations. And to make a distinction between the holy and the profane, and between the unclean and the clean. And so as to teach the sons of Israel all the statutes which the Lord has spoken to them through Moses. Then Moses spoke to Aaron, and to his surviving sons, Eleazar and Ithamar, Take the grain offering that is left over from the Lord's offerings by fire and eat it as unleavened bread beside the altar, for it is most holy. You shall eat it in a holy place, because it is your allotted portion and your son's allotted portion from the Lord's offerings by fire, for so I have been commanded. 14 The breast of the wave offering, however, and the thigh of the offering you may eat in a clean place, you and your sons and your daughters with you for they have been given as your allotted portion and your son's allotted portion from the sacrifices of the peace offerings of the sons of Israel. They shall bring the thigh offered by lifting up and the breast offered by waving, along with the offerings by fire of the portions of fat, to present as a wave offering before the Lord, so it shall be a thing perpetually do you and your sons with you, just as the Lord has commanded. But Moses searched carefully for the goat of the sin offering, and behold, it had been burned. So he was angry with Aaron's surviving sons Eleazar and Ithamar, saying, Why did you not eat the sin offering at the holy place? For it is most holy, and he gave it to you to take away the guilt of the congregation, to make atonement for them before the Lord. Behold, since its blood had not been brought inside, into the sanctuary, you certainly should have eaten it in the sanctuary, just as I commanded. But Aaron said to Moses, Behold, this very day they presented their sin offering in their burnt offering before the Lord. When things like these happened to me, if I had eaten a sin offering today, would it have been good in the sight of the Lord? When Moses heard that, it was good in his sight. The Lord spoke again to Moses and to Aaron, saying to them, Speak to the sons of Israel, saying, These are the creatures which you may eat from all the animals that are on the earth. Whatever has a divided hoof, 
showing split hoofs, and choose the cud, among the animals, that you may eat. Nevertheless, you are not to eat of these, among those which chew the cud, or among those which have a divided hoof, the camel, for though it chews cud, it does not have a divided hoof, it is unclean to you. Likewise, the rock hyrax, for though it chews cud, it does not have a divided hoof, it is unclean to you. The rabbit also, for though it chews cud, it does not have a divided hoof, it is unclean to you. And the pig, for though it has a divided hoof, and so it shows a split hoof, it does not chew cud, it is unclean to you. You shall not eat any of their flesh nor touch their carcasses, they are unclean to you. These you may eat, of whatever is in the water, everything that has fins and scales, in the water, in the seas, or in the rivers, you may eat. But whatever is in the seas and in the rivers that does not have fins and scales among all the teeming life of the water, and among all the living creatures that are in the water, they are detestable things to you. And they shall be detestable to you, you may not eat any of their flesh, and you shall detest their carcasses. Whatever in the water does not have fins and scales is detestable to you. Moreover, these you shall detest among the birds, they are detestable, not to be eaten, the eagle, the vulture, and the buzzard. The red kite, the falcon in its kind. Every raven in its kind. The ostrich, the owl, the seagull, and the hawk in its kind. The little owl, the cormorant, and the great owl. The white owl, the pelican, and the carrion vulture. The stork, the heron in its kinds, the hoopoe, and the bat. All the winged insects that walk on all fours are detestable to you. Yet these you may eat among all the winged insects that walk on all fours, those which have jointed legs above their feet with which to jump on the earth. These of them you may eat, the locust in its kinds, the devastating locust in its kinds, the cricket in its kinds, and the grasshopper in its kinds. But all other winged insects which are four-footed are detestable to you. By these, moreover, you will be made unclean, whoever touches their carcasses becomes unclean until evening. And whoever picks up any of their carcasses shall wash his clothes and be unclean until evening. As for all the animals which have a divided hoof but do not show a split hoof, or do not chew the cut, they are unclean to you, whoever touches them becomes unclean. Also whatever walks on its paws, among all the creatures that walk on all fours, are unclean to you, whoever touches their carcasses becomes unclean until evening. And the one who picks up their carcasses shall wash his clothes and be unclean until evening, they are unclean to you. Now these are to you the unclean among the swarming things which swarm on the earth, the mole, the mouse, and the great lizard in its kinds. The gecko, the crocodile, the lizard, the sand reptile, and the chameleon. These are to you the unclean among all the swarming things, whoever touches them when they are dead becomes unclean until evening. Also anything on which one of them may fall when they are dead becomes unclean, including any wooden article, or clothing, or a hide, or a sack, any article of which use is made, it shall be put in the water and be unclean until evening, then it becomes clean. As for any earthenware vessel into which one of them may fall, whatever is in it becomes unclean and you shall break the vessel. Any of the food which may be eaten, on which water comes, shall become unclean, and any liquid which may be drunk in every vessel shall become unclean. Moreover, everything on which part of their carcass may fall becomes unclean, an oven or a stove shall be smashed, they are unclean and shall continue as unclean to you. Nevertheless, a spring or a cistern collecting water shall be clean, though the one who touches their carcass shall be unclean. 
Now if a part of their carcass falls on any seed for sowing which is to be sown, it is clean. But if water is put on the seed and a part of their carcass falls on it, it is unclean to you. Also if one of the animals dies which you have for food, the one who touches its carcass becomes unclean until evening. He, too, who eats some of its carcass shall wash his clothes and be unclean until evening, and the one who picks up its carcass shall wash his clothes and be unclean until evening. Now every swarming thing that swarms on the earth is detestable, not to be eaten. Whatever crawls on its belly, and whatever walks on all fours, whatever has many feet, in regard to every swarming thing that swarms on the earth, you shall not eat them, because they are detestable. Do not make yourselves detestable through any of the swarming things that swarm, and you shall not make yourselves unclean with them so that you become unclean. For I am the Lord your God. Consecrate yourselves therefore, and be holy, because I am holy. And you shall not make yourselves unclean with any of the swarming things that swarm on the earth. For I am the Lord who brought you up from the land of Egypt, to be your God so you shall be holy, because I am holy. This is the law regarding the animal and the bird, and every living thing that moves in the waters and everything that swarms on the earth. To make a distinction between the unclean and the clean, and between the edible creature and the creature which is not to be eaten. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the sons of Israel, saying, when a woman gives birth and delivers a male child, then she shall be unclean for seven days, as she is in the days of her menstruation, she shall be unclean. Then on the eighth day the flesh of his foreskin shall be circumcised. And she shall stay at home in her condition of blood purification for thirty-three days, she shall not touch any consecrated thing, nor enter the sanctuary until the days of her purification are completed. But if she gives birth to a female child, then she shall be unclean for two weeks, as in her menstruation, and she shall stay at home in her condition of blood purification for sixty-six days. When the days of her purification are completed, for a son or for a daughter, she shall bring to the priest at the doorway of the tent of meeting a one-year-old lamb as a burnt offering and a young pigeon or a turtle dove as a sin offering. Then he shall offer it before the Lord and make atonement for her, and she shall be cleansed from the flow of her blood. This is the law for her who gives birth to a child, whether a male or a female. But if she cannot afford a lamb, then she shall take two turtle doves or two young doves, the one as a burnt offering and the other as a sin offering, and the priest shall make atonement for her, and she will be clean. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the sons of Israel, saying, When a woman gives birth and delivers a male child, then she shall be unclean for seven days, as she is in the days of her menstruation, she shall be unclean. Then on the eighth day the flesh of his foreskin shall be circumcised. And she shall stay at home in her condition of blood purification for thirty-three days, she shall not touch any consecrated thing, nor enter the sanctuary until the days of her purification are completed. But if she gives birth to a female child, then she shall be unclean for two weeks, as in her menstruation, and she shall stay at home in her condition of blood purification for sixty-six days. When the days of her purification are completed, for a son or for a daughter, she shall bring to the priest at the doorway of the tent of meeting a one-year-old lamb as a burnt offering and a young pigeon or a turtle dove as a sin offering. Then he shall offer it before the Lord and make atonement for her, and she shall be cleansed from the flow of her blood. This is the law for her who gives birth to a child, whether a male or a female. But if she cannot afford a lamb, then she shall take two turtle doves or two young doves, the one as a burnt offering and the other as a sin offering, and the priest shall make atonement for her, and she will be clean. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, 
saying, This shall be the law of the person with leprosy on the day of his cleansing. Now he shall be brought to the priest. And the priest shall go out to a place outside of the camp. Then the priest shall look, and if the leprous infection has been healed in the person with leprosy, then the priest shall give orders to take two live clean birds, cedar wood, a scarlet string, and hyssop for the one who is to be cleansed. The priest shall also give orders to slaughter the one bird in an earthenware vessel over running water. As for the live bird, he shall take it together with the cedar wood, the scarlet string, and the hyssop, and shall dip them and the live bird in the blood of the bird that was slaughtered over the running water. He shall then sprinkle seven times the one who is to be cleansed from the leprosy and shall pronounce him clean, and shall let the live bird go free over the open field. The one to be cleansed shall then wash his clothes and shave off all his hair, and bathe in water and be clean. And afterward he may enter the camp, but he shall stay outside his tent for seven days. Then it shall be on the seventh day that he shall shave off all his hair, he shall shave his head and his beard and his eyebrows, even all his hair. He shall then wash his clothes and bathe his body in water and be clean. Now on the eighth day he is to take two male lambs without defect, and a yearling ewe lamb without defect, and three-tenths of an ephah of fine flour mixed with oil as a grain offering, and one log of oil. And the priest who is going to pronounce him clean shall present the person to be cleansed and the offerings before the Lord at the doorway of the tent of meeting. Then the priest shall take the one male lamb and bring it as a guilt offering, with the log of oil, and present them as a wave offering before the Lord. Next he shall slaughter the male lamb in the place where they slaughter the sin offering and the burnt offering, at the place of the sanctuary, for the guilt offering, like the sin offering, belongs to the priest, it is most holy. The priest shall then take some of the blood of the guilt offering, and the priest shall put it on the lobe of the right ear of the one to be cleansed, and on the thumb of his right hand, and on the big toe of his right foot. The priest shall also take some of the log of oil, and pour it into his left palm. The priest shall then dip his right hand finger into the oil that is in his left palm, and with his finger sprinkle some of the oil seven times before the Lord. Of the remaining oil which is in his palm, the priest shall put some on the right ear lobe of the one to be cleansed, and on the thumb of his right hand, and on the big toe of his right foot, on the blood of the guilt offering. As for the rest of the oil that is in the priest's palm, he shall put it on the head of the one to be cleansed. So the priest shall make atonement on his behalf before the Lord. The priest shall next offer the sin offering and make atonement for the one to be cleansed from his uncleanness. Then afterward, he shall slaughter the burnt offering. The priest shall offer up the burnt offering and the grain offering on the altar. So the priest shall make atonement for him, and he will be clean. But if he is poor and his means are insufficient, then he is to take one male lamb for a guilt offering as a wave offering to make atonement for him, and a tenth of an ephah of fine flour mixed with oil as a grain offering, and a log of oil and two turtle doves or two young doves, which are within his means. The one shall be a sin offering, and the other a burnt offering. Then on the eighth day he shall bring them for his cleansing to the priest, at the doorway of the tent of meeting, before the Lord. The priest shall take the lamb of the guilt offering and the log of oil, and the priest shall offer them as a wave offering before the Lord. Next he shall slaughter the lamb of the guilt offering, and the priest is to take some of the blood of the guilt offering and put it on the lobe of the right ear of the one to be cleansed, and on the thumb of his right hand, and on the big toe of his right foot. The priest shall also pour some of the oil into his left palm. And with his right hand finger the priest shall sprinkle some of the oil that is in his left palm seven times before the Lord. 
The priest shall then put some of the oil that is in his palm on the lobe of the right ear of the one to be cleansed, and on the thumb of his right hand, and on the big toe of his right foot, on the place of the blood of the guilt offering. Moreover, the rest of the oil that is in the priest's palm, he shall put on the head of the one to be cleansed, to make atonement on his behalf before the Lord. He shall then offer one of the turtle doves or young doves, which are within his means. He shall offer what he can afford, the one as a sin offering and the other as a burnt offering, together with the grain offering. So the priest shall make atonement before the Lord on behalf of the one to be cleansed. This is the law for him in whom there is an infection of leprosy, whose means are limited for his cleansing. The Lord further spoke to Moses and to Aaron, saying, when you enter the land of Canaan, which I am giving you as a possession, and I put a spot of leprosy on a house in the land of your possession. Then the one who owns the house shall come and tell the priest, saying, Something like a spot of leprosy has become visible to me in the house. The priest shall then command that they empty the house before the priest goes in to look at the spot, so that everything in the house need not become unclean, and afterward the priest shall go in to look at the house. So he shall look at the spot, and if the spot on the walls of the house has greenish or reddish depressions and appears deeper than the surface, the priest shall come out of the house, to the doorway, and quarantine the house for seven days. 39 Then the priest shall return on the seventh day and make an inspection. If the spot has indeed spread on the walls of the house, the priest shall order them to pull out the stones with the spot on them and throw them away at an unclean place outside the city. And he shall have the house scraped all around inside, and they shall dump the plaster that they scrape off at an unclean place outside the city. Then they shall take other stones and replace the discarded stones, and he shall take other plaster and replaster the house. If, however, the spot breaks out again in the house after he has pulled out the stones and scraped the house, and after it has been replastered, then the priest shall come in and make an inspection. If he sees that the spot has indeed spread in the house, it is a malignant spot in the house, it is unclean. The owner shall therefore tear down the house, its stones, its timbers, and all the plaster of the house, and he shall take them outside the city to an unclean place. Moreover, whoever goes into the house during the time that he has quarantined it, becomes unclean until evening. Likewise, whoever lies down in the house shall wash his clothes, and whoever eats in the house shall wash his clothes. If, on the other hand, the priest comes in and makes an inspection and the spot has not indeed spread in the house after the house has been replastered, then the priest shall pronounce the house clean because the spot has not reappeared. To cleanse the house then, he shall take two birds, cedar wood, a scarlet string, and hyssop. And he shall slaughter the one bird in an earthenware vessel over running water. Then he shall take the cedar wood, the hyssop, and the scarlet string, with the live bird, and dip them in the blood of the slaughtered bird as well as in the running water, and sprinkle the house seven times. So he shall cleanse the house with the blood of the bird and with the running water, along with the live bird, the cedar wood, the hyssop, and the scarlet string. However, he shall let the live bird go free outside the city into the open field. So he shall make atonement for the house, and it will be clean. This is the law for any spot of leprosy, even for a scale. And for the leprous garment or house. And for a swelling, for a scab, and for a bright spot. To teach when they are unclean and when they are clean. This is the law of leprosy. The Lord also spoke to Moses and to Aaron saying, Speak to the sons of Israel, and say to them, When any man has a discharge from his body, his discharge is unclean.
This, moreover, shall be his uncleanness in his discharge, it is his uncleanness whether his body allows its discharge to flow or whether his body obstructs its discharge. Every bed on which the man with the discharge lies becomes unclean, and everything on which he sits becomes unclean. Anyone, moreover, who touches his bed shall wash his clothes and bathe in water and be unclean until evening. And whoever sits on the thing on which the man with the discharge has been sitting, shall wash his clothes and bathe in water and be unclean until evening. Also whoever touches the man with the discharge shall wash his clothes and bathe in water and be unclean until evening. Or if the man with the discharge spits on one who is clean, he too shall wash his clothes and bathe in water and be unclean until evening. Every saddle on which the man with the discharge rides becomes unclean. Whoever then touches any of the things which were under him shall be unclean until evening, and the one who carries them shall wash his clothes and bathe in water and be unclean until evening. Likewise, whomever the man with the discharge touches without having rinsed his hands in water shall wash his clothes and bathe in water and be unclean until evening. However, an earthenware vessel which the man with the discharge touches shall be broken, and every wooden vessel shall be rinsed in water. Now when the man with the discharge becomes cleansed from his discharge, then he shall count off for himself seven days for his cleansing, he shall then wash his clothes and bathe his body in running water and will become clean. Then on the eighth day he shall take for himself two turtle doves or two young doves, and come before the Lord to the doorway of the tent of meeting and give them to the priest. And the priest shall offer them, one as a sin offering and the other as a burnt offering. So the priest shall make atonement on his behalf before the Lord because of his discharge. Now if a man has a seminal omission, he shall bathe all his body in water and be unclean until evening. As for any garment or any leather on which there is a seminal omission, it shall be washed with water and be unclean until evening. If a man sleeps with a woman so that there is a seminal omission, they shall both bathe in water and be unclean until evening. When a woman has a discharge, if her discharge in her body is blood, she shall continue in her menstrual impurity for seven days, and whoever touches her shall be unclean until evening. Everything also on which she lies during her menstrual impurity shall be unclean, and everything on which she sits shall be unclean. Anyone who touches her bed shall wash his clothes and bathe in water and be unclean until evening. Whoever touches any object on which she sits shall wash his clothes and bathe in water and be unclean until evening. Whether it be on the bed or on the thing on which she is sitting, when he touches it, he shall be unclean until evening. If a man actually sleeps with her so that her menstrual impurity is on him, he shall be unclean seven days, and every bed on which he lies shall be unclean. Now if a woman has a discharge of her blood for many days, not at the period of her menstrual impurity, or if she has a discharge beyond that period, for all the days of her impure discharge she shall continue as though in her menstrual impurity, she is unclean. Any bed on which she lies all the days of her discharge shall be to her like her bed at menstruation, and every object on which she sits shall be unclean, like her uncleanness at that time. Likewise, whoever touches them shall be unclean, and shall wash his clothes and bathe in water and be unclean until evening. When she becomes clean from her discharge, she shall count off for herself seven days, and afterward she will be clean. Then on the eighth day she shall take for herself two turtle doves or two young doves, and bring them to the priest, to the doorway of the tent of meeting. And the priest shall offer the one as a sin offering, and the other as a burnt offering. So the priest shall make atonement on her behalf before the Lord because of her impure discharge. 
And so you shall keep the sons of Israel separated from their uncleanness, so that they will not die in their uncleanness by their defiling my tabernacle that is among them. This is the law for the one with a discharge, and for the man who has a seminal emission so that he is unclean by it. And for the woman who is ill because of menstrual impurity, and for the one who has a discharge, whether a male or a female, or a man who sleeps with an unclean woman. Now the Lord spoke to Moses after the death of the two sons of Aaron, when they had approached the presence of the Lord and died. The Lord said to Moses, Tell your brother Aaron that he shall not enter at any time into the holy place inside the veil, before the atoning cover which is on the ark, or he will die, for I will appear in the cloud over the atoning cover. 3. Aaron shall enter the holy place with this, with a bull as a sin offering and a ram as a burnt offering. He shall put on the holy linen tunic, and the linen undergarments shall be next to his body, and he shall be wrapped about the waist with the linen sash and the linen turban wound around his forehead, these are holy garments. He shall bathe his body in water and put them on. And he shall take from the congregation of the sons of Israel two male goats as a sin offering, and one ram as a burnt offering. Then Aaron shall offer the bull as the sin offering, which is for himself, so that he may make atonement for himself and for his household. He shall then take the two goats and present them before the Lord at the doorway of the tent of meeting. Aaron shall cast lots for the two goats, one lot for the Lord and the other lot for the scapegoat. Then Aaron shall offer the goat on which the lot for the Lord fell, and make it a sin offering. But the goat on which the lot for the scapegoat fell shall be presented alive before the Lord, to make atonement upon it, to send it into the wilderness as the scapegoat. Then Aaron shall offer the bull of the sin offering which is for himself and make atonement for himself and for his household, and he shall slaughter the bull of the sin offering which is for himself. He shall take a fire pan full of coals of fire from upon the altar before the Lord and two handfuls of finely ground sweet incense, and bring it inside the veil. He shall put the incense on the fire before the Lord, so that the cloud of incense may cover the atoning cover that is on the ark of the testimony, otherwise he will die. Moreover, he shall take some of the blood of the bull and sprinkle it with his finger on the atoning cover on the east side, also in front of the atoning cover he shall sprinkle some of the blood with his finger seven times. Then he shall slaughter the goat of the sin offering, which is for the people, and bring its blood inside the veil and do with its blood as he did with the blood of the bull, and sprinkle it on the atoning cover and in front of the atoning cover. He shall make atonement for the holy place, because of the impurities of the sons of Israel and because of their unlawful acts regarding all their sins, and he shall do so for the tent of meeting which remains with them in the midst of their impurities. When he goes in to make atonement in the holy place, no one shall be in the tent of meeting until he comes out, so that he may make atonement for himself and for his household, and for all the assembly of Israel. Then he shall go out to the altar that is before the Lord and make atonement for it. He shall take some of the blood from the bull and some of the blood from the goat, and put it on the horns of the altar on all sides. With his finger he shall sprinkle some of the blood on it seven times and cleanse it, and consecrate it from the impurities of the sons of Israel. When he finishes atoning for the holy place and the tent of meeting and the altar, he shall offer the live goat. Then Aaron shall lay both of his hands on the head of the live goat, and confess over it all the wrongdoings of the sons of Israel and all their unlawful acts regarding all their sins, and he shall place them on the head of the goat and send it away into the wilderness by the hand of a man who stands ready. Then the goat shall carry on itself all their wrongdoings to an isolated territory, he shall release the goat in the wilderness. Then Aaron shall come into the tent of meeting and take off the linen garments which he put on when he went into the holy place, and shall leave them there. 
And he shall bathe his body with water in a holy place and put on his clothes, and come out and offer his burnt offering and the burnt offering of the people, and make atonement for himself and for the people. Then he shall offer up in smoke the fat of the sin offering on the altar. The one who released the goat as the scapegoat shall wash his clothes and bathe his body with water, then afterward he shall come into the camp. But the bull of the sin offering and the goat of the sin offering, whose blood was brought in to make atonement in the holy place, shall be taken outside the camp, and they shall burn their hides, their flesh, and their refuse in the fire. Then the one who burns them shall wash his clothes and bathe his body with water, and afterward he shall come into the camp. This shall be a permanent statute for you, in the seventh month, on the tenth day of the month, you shall humble yourselves and not do any work, whether the native, or the stranger who resides among you. For it is on this day that atonement shall be made for you to cleanse you, you will be clean from all your sins before the Lord. It is to be a Sabbath of solemn rest for you, so that you may humble yourselves, it is a permanent statute. So the priest who is anointed and ordained to serve as priest in his father's place shall make atonement, he shall put on the linen garments, the holy garments, thirty-three and make atonement for the holy sanctuary, and he shall make atonement for the tent of meeting and for the altar. He shall also make atonement for the priests and for all the people of the assembly. Now you shall have this as a permanent statute, to make atonement for the sons of Israel for all their sins once every year. And just as the Lord had commanded Moses, so he did. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to Aaron and to his sons and to all the sons of Israel, and say to them, This is what the Lord has commanded, saying, Anyone from the house of Israel who slaughters an ox, a lamb, or a goat in the camp, or slaughters it outside the camp, and has not brought it to the doorway of the tent of meeting to present it as an offering to the Lord in front of the tabernacle of the Lord, bloodshed is to be counted against that person. He has shed blood, and that person shall be cut off from among his people. This shall be done so that the sons of Israel will bring their sacrifices which they were sacrificing in the open field, so that they will bring them to the Lord at the doorway of the tent of meeting to the priest, and sacrifice them as sacrifices of peace offerings to the Lord. The priest shall sprinkle the blood on the altar of the Lord at the doorway of the tent of meeting, and offer up the fat in smoke as a soothing aroma to the Lord. 7 And they shall no longer offer their sacrifices to the goat demons with which they play the prostitute. This shall be a permanent statute to them throughout their generations. Then you shall say to them, Anyone from the house of Israel, or from the strangers who reside among them, who offers a burnt offering or sacrifice, 9 And does not bring it to the doorway of the tent of meeting to offer it to the Lord, that person also shall be cut off from his people. And anyone from the house of Israel, or from the strangers who reside among them, who eats any blood, I will set my face against that person who eats the blood, and will cut him off from among his people. For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you on the altar to make atonement for your souls, for it is the blood by reason of the life that makes atonement. Therefore I said to the sons of Israel, no person among you may eat blood, nor may any stranger who resides among you eat blood. So when anyone from the sons of Israel, or from the strangers who reside among them, while hunting catches an animal or a bird which may be eaten, he shall pour out its blood and cover it with dirt. For as for the life of all flesh, its blood is identified with its life. Therefore I said to the sons of Israel, you are not to eat the blood of any flesh, for the life of all flesh is its blood, whoever eats it shall be cut off. And any person who eats an animal which dies or is torn by animals, whether he is a native or a stranger, shall wash his clothes and bathe in water, and remain unclean until evening, then he will become clean. 
But if he does not wash his clothes and bathe his body, then he shall bear the responsibility for his guilt. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the sons of Israel and say to them, I am the Lord your God. You shall not do what is done in the land of Egypt where you lived, nor are you to do what is done in the land of Canaan where I am bringing you, you shall not walk in their statutes. You are to perform my judgments and keep my statutes, to live in accord with them, I am the Lord your God. 5. So you shall keep my statutes and my judgments, which, if a person follows them, then he will live by them, I am the Lord. None of you shall approach any blood relative of his to uncover nakedness, I am the Lord. You shall not uncover the nakedness of your father, that is, the nakedness of your mother. She is your mother, you are not to uncover her nakedness. You shall not uncover the nakedness of your father's wife, it is your father's nakedness. As for the nakedness of your sister, either your father's daughter or your mother's daughter, whether born in the household or born outside the household, you shall not uncover their nakedness. The nakedness of your son's daughter or your daughter's daughter, their nakedness you shall not uncover, for their nakedness is yours. The nakedness of your father's wife's daughter, born to your father, she is your sister, you shall not uncover her nakedness. You shall not uncover the nakedness of your father's sister, she is your father's blood relative. You shall not uncover the nakedness of your mother's sister, for she is your mother's blood relative. You shall not uncover the nakedness of your father's brother. You shall not approach his wife, she is your aunt. You shall not uncover the nakedness of your daughter-in-law. She is your son's wife, you shall not uncover her nakedness. You shall not uncover the nakedness of your brother's wife, it is your brother's nakedness. You shall not uncover the nakedness of a woman and of her daughter, nor shall you take her son's daughter or her daughter's daughter, to uncover her nakedness, they are blood relatives. It is an outrageous sin. And you shall not marry a woman in addition to her sister as a second wife while she is alive, to uncover her nakedness. Also you shall not approach a woman to uncover her nakedness during her menstrual impurity. And you shall not have sexual intercourse with your neighbor's wife, to be defiled with her. You shall not give any of your children to offer them to Molech, nor shall you profane the name of your God, I am the Lord. You shall not sleep with a male as one sleeps with a female, it is an abomination. Also you shall not have sexual intercourse with any animal to be defiled with it, nor shall any woman stand before an animal to mate with it, it is a perversion. Do not defile yourselves by any of these things, for by all these things the nations which I am driving out from you have become defiled. For the land has become defiled, therefore I have brought its punishment upon it, so the land has vomited out its inhabitants. But as for you, you are to keep my statutes and my judgments, and you shall not do any of these abominations, neither the native, nor the stranger who resides among you. For the people of the land who were there before you did all these abominations, and the land has become defiled. So that the land will not vomit you out should you defile it, as it has vomited out the nation which was there before you. For whoever does any of these abominations, those persons who do so shall be cut off from among their people. So you are to keep your commitment to me not to practice any of the abominable customs which have been practiced before you, so that you do not defile yourselves with them, I am the Lord your God. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to all the congregation of the sons of Israel and say to them, You shall be holy, for I the Lord your God am holy. Every one of you shall revere his mother and his father, and you shall keep my Sabbaths, I am the Lord your God. Do not turn to idols or make for yourselves cast metal gods, I am the Lord your God. Now when you offer a sacrifice of peace offerings to the Lord, you shall offer it so that you may be accepted. 
It shall be eaten on the same day you offer it, and on the next day, but what remains until the third day shall be burned with fire. So if it is eaten at all on the third day, it is unclean, it will not be accepted. And everyone who eats it will bear the consequences for his guilt, because he has profaned the holy thing of the Lord, and that person shall be cut off from his people. Now when you reap the harvest of your land, you shall not reap to the very edges of your field, nor shall you gather the gleanings of your harvest. And you shall not glean your vineyard, nor shall you gather the fallen grapes of your vineyard, you shall leave them for the needy and for the stranger. I am the Lord your God. You shall not steal, nor deal falsely, nor lie to one another. And you shall not swear falsely by my name, so as to profane the name of your God, I am the Lord. You shall not oppress your neighbor, nor rob him. The wages of a hired worker are not to remain with you all night until morning. You shall not curse a person who is deaf, nor put a stumbling block before a person who is blind, but you shall revere your God, I am the Lord. You shall not do injustice in judgment, you shall not show partiality to the poor nor give preference to the great, but you are to judge your neighbor fairly. You shall not go about as a slanderer among your people, and you are not to jeopardize the life of your neighbor. I am the Lord. You shall not hate your fellow countrymen in your heart, you may certainly rebuke your neighbor, but you are not to incur sin because of him. You shall not take vengeance, nor hold any grudge against the sons of your people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself, I am the Lord. You are to keep my statutes. You shall not crossbreed two kinds of your cattle, you shall not sow your field with two kinds of seed, nor wear a garment of two kinds of material mixed together. Now if a man has sexual relations with a woman who is a slave acquired for another man, but who has in no way been redeemed or given her freedom, there shall be punishment, they shall not, however, be put to death, because she was not free. He shall bring his guilt offering to the Lord to the doorway of the tent of meeting, a ram as a guilt offering. The priest shall also make atonement for him with the ram of the guilt offering before the Lord for his sin which he has committed, and the sin which he has committed will be forgiven him. Now when you enter the land and plant all kinds of trees for food, then you shall count their fruit as forbidden. For three years it shall be forbidden to you, it shall not be eaten. And in the fourth year all its fruit shall be holy, an offering of praise to the Lord. But in the fifth year you shall eat its fruit, so that its yield may increase for you, I am the Lord your God. You shall not eat any meat with the blood. You shall not practice divination nor soothsaying. You shall not round off the hairline of your heads, nor trim the edges of your beard. You shall not make any cuts in your body for the dead, nor make any tattoo marks on yourselves, I am the Lord. Do not profane your daughter by making her a prostitute, so that the land does not fall into prostitution, and the land does not become full of outrageous sin. You shall keep my Sabbaths and revere my sanctuary, I am the Lord. Do not turn to mediums or spiritists, do not seek them out to be defiled by them. I am the Lord your God. You shall stand up in the presence of the gray-headed and honor elders, and you shall fear your God, I am the Lord. When a stranger resides with you in your land, you shall not do him wrong. The stranger who resides with you shall be to you as the native among you, and you shall love him as yourself, for you were strangers in the land of Egypt, I am the Lord your God. You shall do no wrong in judgment, in measurement of weight, or volume. You shall have accurate balances, accurate weights, an accurate ephah, and an accurate hin, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out from the land of Egypt. So you shall keep all my statutes and all my ordinances, and do them, I am the Lord. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, 
saying, You shall also say to the sons of Israel, Anyone from the sons of Israel or from the strangers residing in Israel who gives any of his children to Molech, shall certainly be put to death, the people of the land shall stone him with stones. I will also set my face against that man and will cut him off from among his people, because he has given some of his children to Molech, so as to defile my sanctuary and to profane my holy name. If the people of the land, however, should ever disregard that man when he gives any of his children to Molech, so as not to put him to death. Then I myself will set my face against that man and against his family, and I will cut off from among their people both him and all those who play the prostitute with him, by playing the prostitute with Molech. As for the person who turns to mediums and to spiritists, to play the prostitute with them, I will also set my face against that person and will cut him off from among his people. You shall consecrate yourselves therefore and be holy, for I am the Lord your God. So you shall keep my statutes and practice them, I am the Lord who sanctifies you. If there is anyone who curses his father or his mother, he shall certainly be put to death. He has cursed his father or his mother, and has brought his own death upon himself. If there is a man who commits adultery with another man's wife, one who commits adultery with his friend's wife, the adulterer and the adulteress must be put to death. If there is a man who sleeps with his father's wife, he has uncovered his father's nakedness. Both of them must be put to death, they have brought their own deaths upon themselves. If there is a man who sleeps with his daughter-in-law, both of them must be put to death. They have committed incest, and have brought their own deaths upon themselves. If there is a man who sleeps with a male as those who sleep with a woman, both of them have committed a detestable act, they must be put to death. They have brought their own deaths upon themselves. If there is a man who marries a woman and her mother, it is an outrageous sin, both he and they shall be burned with fire, so that there will be no such outrageous sin in your midst. If there is a man who has sexual intercourse with an animal, he must be put to death, you shall also kill the animal. If there is a woman who approaches any animal to mate with it, you shall kill the woman and the animal, they must be put to death. They have brought their own deaths upon themselves. If there is a man who takes his sister, his father's daughter or his mother's daughter, so that he sees her nakedness and she sees his nakedness, it is a disgrace, and they shall be cut off in the sight of the sons of their people. He has uncovered his sister's nakedness he bears his guilt. If there is a man who sleeps with a menstruous woman and uncovers her nakedness, he has exposed her flow, and she has uncovered the flow of her blood, so both of them shall be cut off from among their people. You shall also not uncover the nakedness of your mother's sister or of your father's sister, for such a one has uncovered his blood relative, they will bear their guilt. If there is a man who sleeps with his uncle's wife, he has uncovered his uncle's nakedness, they will bear their sin. They will die childless. If there is a man who takes his brother's wife, it is detestable, he has uncovered his brother's nakedness. They will be childless. You are therefore to keep all my statutes and all my ordinances, and do them, so that the land to which I am bringing you to live will not vomit you out. 23 Furthermore, you shall not follow the customs of the nation which I am going to drive out before you, because they did all these things, therefore I have felt disgust for them. So I have said to you, you are to take possession of their land, and I myself will give it to you to possess, a land flowing with milk and honey. I am the Lord your God, who has singled you out from the peoples. You are therefore to make a distinction between the clean animal and the unclean, and between the unclean bird and the clean, and you shall not make yourselves detestable by animal or by bird, or by anything that crawls on the ground, which I have distinguished for you as unclean. So you are to be holy to me, for I the Lord am holy, 
and I have singled you out from the peoples to be mine. Now a man or a woman who is a medium or a spiritist must be put to death. They shall be stoned with stones, they have brought their own deaths upon themselves. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, You shall also say to the sons of Israel, Anyone from the sons of Israel or from the strangers residing in Israel who gives any of his children to Molech, shall certainly be put to death, the people of the land shall stone him with stones. I will also set my face against that man and will cut him off from among his people, because he has given some of his children to Molech, so as to defile my sanctuary and to profane my holy name. If the people of the land, however, should ever disregard that man when he gives any of his children to Molech, so as not to put him to death. Then I myself will set my face against that man and against his family, and I will cut off from among their people both him and all those who play the prostitute with him, by playing the prostitute with Molech. As for the person who turns to mediums and to spiritists, to play the prostitute with them, I will also set my face against that person and will cut him off from among his people. You shall consecrate yourselves therefore and be holy, for I am the Lord your God. So you shall keep my statutes and practice them, I am the Lord who sanctifies you. If there is anyone who curses his father or his mother, he shall certainly be put to death. He has cursed his father or his mother, and has brought his own death upon himself. If there is a man who commits adultery with another man's wife, one who commits adultery with his friend's wife, the adulterer and the adulteress must be put to death. If there is a man who sleeps with his father's wife, he has uncovered his father's nakedness. Both of them must be put to death, they have brought their own deaths upon themselves. If there is a man who sleeps with his daughter-in-law, both of them must be put to death. They have committed incest, and have brought their own deaths upon themselves. If there is a man who sleeps with a male as those who sleep with a woman, both of them have committed a detestable act, they must be put to death. They have brought their own deaths upon themselves. If there is a man who marries a woman and her mother, it is an outrageous sin, both he and they shall be burned with fire, so that there will be no such outrageous sin in your midst. If there is a man who has sexual intercourse with an animal, he must be put to death, you shall also kill the animal. If there is a woman who approaches any animal to mate with it, you shall kill the woman and the animal, they must be put to death. They have brought their own deaths upon themselves. If there is a man who takes his sister, his father's daughter or his mother's daughter, so that he sees her nakedness and she sees his nakedness, it is a disgrace, and they shall be cut off in the sight of the sons of their people. He has uncovered his sister's nakedness, he bears his guilt. If there is a man who sleeps with a menstruous woman and uncovers her nakedness, he has exposed her flow, and she has uncovered the flow of her blood, so both of them shall be cut off from among their people. You shall also not uncover the nakedness of your mother's sister or of your father's sister, for such a one has uncovered his blood relative, they will bear their guilt. If there is a man who sleeps with his uncle's wife, he has uncovered his uncle's nakedness, they will bear their sin. They will die childless. If there is a man who takes his brother's wife, it is detestable, he has uncovered his brother's nakedness. They will be childless. You are therefore to keep all my statutes and all my ordinances, and do them, so that the land to which I am bringing you to live will not vomit you out. 23 Furthermore, you shall not follow the customs of the nation which I am going to drive out before you, because they did all these things, therefore I have felt disgust for them. So I have said to you, you are to take possession of their land, and I myself will give it to you to possess, a land flowing with milk and honey. I am the Lord your God, who has singled you out from the peoples. You are therefore to make a distinction between the clean animal and the unclean, 
and between the unclean bird and the clean, and you shall not make yourselves detestable by animal or by bird, or by anything that crawls on the ground, which I have distinguished for you as unclean. So you are to be holy to me, for I the Lord am holy, and I have singled you out from the peoples to be mine. Now a man or a woman who is a medium or a spiritist must be put to death. They shall be stoned with stones, they have brought their own deaths upon themselves. Then the Lord said to Moses, Speak to the priests, the sons of Aaron, and say to them, No one shall defile himself for a dead person among his people. Except for his relatives who are nearest to him, his mother, his father, his son, his daughter, and his brother. Also for his virgin sister who is near to him because she has not had a husband, for her, he may defile himself. He shall not defile himself as a relative by marriage among his people, so as to profane himself. They shall not shave any area on their heads bald, nor shave off the edges of their beards, nor make any cuts in their flesh. They shall be holy to their God and not profane the name of their God, because they present the offerings by fire to the Lord, the food of their God, so they shall be holy. They shall not take a woman who is a prostitute and profaned, nor shall they take a woman divorced from her husband, for he is holy to his God. You shall consecrate him, therefore, because he offers the food of your God. He shall be holy to you, for I the Lord, who sanctifies you, am holy. Also the daughter of any priest, if she profanes herself by prostitution, she profanes her father, she shall be burned with fire. The priest who is highest among his brothers, on whose head the anointing oil has been poured and who has been consecrated to wear the garments, shall not uncover his head nor tear his clothes. Nor shall he approach any dead person, nor defile himself even for his father or his mother. Nor shall he leave the sanctuary nor profane the sanctuary of his God, for the consecration of the anointing oil of his God is on him, I am the Lord. He shall take a wife in her virginity. A widow, or a divorced woman, or one who is profaned by prostitution, these he shall not take, but rather he is to marry a virgin of his own people. So that he will not profane his children among his people, for I am the Lord who sanctifies him. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to Aaron, saying, None of your descendants throughout their generations who has an impairment shall approach to offer the food of his God. For no one who has an impairment shall approach, a man who is blind, or one who limps, or one who has a slit nose, or one with any conspicuous feature or someone who has a broken foot or broken hand, or a contorted back, or one who is a dwarf, or has a spot in his eye, or a festering rash or scabs, or crushed testicles. No man among the descendants of Aaron the priest who has an impairment is to come forward to offer the Lord's offerings by fire, since he has an impairment, he shall not come forward to offer the food of his God. He may eat the food of his God, both of the Most Holy and of the Holy. Only he shall not come up to the veil or approach the altar, since he has an impairment, so that he does not profane my sanctuaries. For I am the Lord who sanctifies them. So Moses spoke to Aaron and to his sons and to all the sons of Israel. The Lord spoke again to Moses, saying, Speak to the sons of Israel and say to them, the Lord's appointed times which you shall proclaim as holy convocations, my appointed times are these. For six days work may be done, but on the seventh day there is a Sabbath of complete rest, a holy convocation. You shall not do any work, it is a Sabbath to the Lord in all your dwellings. These are the appointed times of the Lord, holy convocations which you shall proclaim at the times appointed for them. In the first month, on the fourteenth day of the month at twilight is the Lord's Passover. 
Then on the fifteenth day of the same month there is the feast of unleavened bread to the Lord, for seven days you shall eat unleavened bread. On the first day you shall have a holy convocation, you shall not do any laborious work. But for seven days you shall present an offering by fire to the Lord. On the seventh day is a holy convocation, you shall not do any laborious work. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the sons of Israel and say to them, When you enter the land which I am going to give to you and you gather its harvest, then you shall bring in the sheaf of the first fruits of your harvest to the priest. He shall wave the sheaf before the Lord for you to be accepted, on the day after the Sabbath the priest shall wave it. Now on the day when you wave the sheaf, you shall offer a male lamb one year old without defect as a burnt offering to the Lord. Its grain offering shall then be two tenths of an ephah of fine flour mixed with oil, an offering by fire to the Lord for a soothing aroma, with its drink offering, a fourth of a hin of wine. Until this very day, until you have brought in the offering of your God, you shall eat neither bread nor roasted grain nor new produce. It is to be a permanent statute throughout your generations in all your dwelling places. You shall also count for yourselves from the day after the Sabbath, from the day when you brought in the sheaf of the wave offering, there shall be seven complete Sabbaths. You shall count fifty days to the day after the seventh Sabbath, then you shall present a new grain offering to the Lord. You shall bring in from your dwelling places two loaves of bread as a wave offering, made of two tenths of an ephah, they shall be of a fine flour, baked with leaven as first fruits to the Lord. Along with the bread you shall present seven one-year-old male lambs without defect, and a bull of the herd and two rams, they are to be a burnt offering to the Lord, with their grain offering and their drink offerings, an offering by fire of a soothing aroma to the Lord. You shall also offer one male goat as a sin offering, and two male lambs one year old as a sacrifice of peace offerings. The priest shall then wave them with the bread of the first fruits as a wave offering with two lambs before the Lord, they are to be holy to the Lord for the priest. On this very day you shall make a proclamation as well, you are to have a holy convocation. You shall do no laborious work. It is to be a permanent statute in all your dwelling places throughout your generations. When you reap the harvest of your land, moreover, you shall not reap to the very edges of your field or gather the gleaning of your harvest, you are to leave them for the needy and the stranger. I am the Lord your God. Again the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the sons of Israel, saying, in the seventh month on the first of the month you shall have a rest, a reminder by blowing of trumpets, a holy convocation. You shall not do any laborious work, but you shall present an offering by fire to the Lord. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, On exactly the tenth day of this seventh month is the day of atonement, it shall be a holy convocation for you and you shall humble yourselves and present an offering by fire to the Lord. You shall not do any work on this very day, for it is a day of atonement, to make atonement on your behalf before the Lord your God. If there is any person who does not humble himself on this very day, he shall be cut off from his people. As for any person who does any work on this very day, that person I will eliminate from among his people. You shall not do any work. It is to be a permanent statute throughout your generations in all your dwelling places. It is to be a Sabbath of complete rest for you, and you shall humble yourselves, on the ninth of the month at evening, from evening until evening, you shall keep your Sabbath. Again the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the sons of Israel, saying, on the fifteenth of this seventh month is the Feast of Booths for seven days to the Lord. On the first day is a holy convocation, you shall not do any laborious work. 
For seven days you shall present an offering by fire to the Lord. On the eighth day you shall have a holy convocation and present an offering by fire to the Lord, it is an assembly. You shall not do any laborious work. These are the appointed times of the Lord which you shall proclaim as holy convocations, to present offerings by fire to the Lord, burnt offerings and grain offerings, sacrifices and drink offerings, each day's matter on its own day. Besides those of the Sabbaths of the Lord, and besides your gifts and besides all your vowed and voluntary offerings, which you give to the Lord. On exactly the fifteenth day of the seventh month, when you have gathered in the crops of the land, you shall celebrate the feast of the Lord for seven days, with a rest on the first day and a rest on the eighth day. Now on the first day you shall take for yourselves the foliage of beautiful trees, palm branches, and branches of trees with thick branches and willows of the brook, and you shall rejoice before the Lord your God for seven days. So you shall celebrate it as a feast to the Lord for seven days in the year. It shall be a permanent statute throughout your generations, you shall celebrate it in the seventh month. You shall live in booths for seven days, all the native born in Israel shall live in booths. So that your generations may know that I had the sons of Israel live in booths when I brought them out from the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. So Moses declared to the sons of Israel the appointed times of the Lord. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Command the sons of Israel that they bring to you clear oil from beaten olives for the light, to make a lamp burn continually. Outside the veil of the testimony in the tent of meeting, Aaron shall keep it in order from evening to morning before the Lord continually, it shall be a permanent statute throughout your generations. He shall keep the lamps in order on the pure gold lampstand before the Lord continually. Then you shall take fine flour and bake twelve cakes with it, two tenths of an ephah shall be in each cake. And you shall set them in two rows, six to a row, on the pure gold table before the Lord. You shall put pure frankincense on each row so that it may be a memorial portion for the bread, an offering by fire to the Lord. Every Sabbath day he shall set it in order before the Lord continually, it is an everlasting covenant for the sons of Israel. And it shall be for Aaron and his sons, and they shall eat it in a holy place, for it is most holy to him from the Lord's offerings by fire, his portion forever. Now the son of an Israelite woman, his father was an Egyptian, went out among the sons of Israel, and the Israelite woman's son and an Israelite man had a fight within the camp. And the son of the Israelite woman blasphemed the name and cursed. So they brought him to Moses. Now his mother's name was Shelemith, the daughter of Dibri, of the tribe of Dan. Then they put him in custody, waiting for Moses to give them a clear decision in accordance with the command of the Lord. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Bring the one who has cursed outside the camp, and have all who heard him lay their hands on his head, then have all the congregation stone him. You shall also speak to the sons of Israel, saying, If anyone curses his God, then he will bear the responsibility for his sin. Moreover, the one who blasphemes the name of the Lord must be put to death, all the congregation shall certainly stone him. The stranger as well as the native, when he blasphemes the name, shall be put to death. Now if someone takes any human life, he must be put to death. But the one who takes the life of an animal shall make restitution, life for life. If someone injures his neighbor, just as he has done, so shall it be done to him, twenty fracture for fracture, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, just as he has injured a person, so shall it be inflicted on him. So the one who kills an animal shall make restitution, but the one who kills a person shall be put to death. There shall be only one standard for you, it shall be for the stranger as well as the native, 
for I am the Lord your God. Then Moses spoke to the sons of Israel, and they brought the one who had cursed outside the camp, and stoned him with stones. So the sons of Israel did just as the Lord had commanded Moses. The Lord then spoke to Moses on Mount Sinai, saying, Speak to the sons of Israel and say to them, When you come into the land which I am going to give you, then the land shall have a Sabbath to the Lord. For six years you shall sow your field, and for six years you shall prune your vineyard and gather in its produce. But during the seventh year the land shall have a Sabbath rest, a Sabbath to the Lord, you shall not sow your field nor prune your vineyard. You shall not reap your harvests after growth, and you shall not gather your grapes of untrimmed vines, the land shall have a sabbatical year. All of you shall have the Sabbath produce of the land as food, for yourself, your male and female slaves, and your hired worker and your foreign resident, those who live as strangers among you. Even your cattle and the animals that are in your land shall have all its produce to eat. You are also to count off seven Sabbaths of years for yourself, seven times seven years, so that you have the time of the seven Sabbaths of years, that is, forty-nine years. You shall then sound a ram's horn abroad on the tenth day of the seventh month, on the day of atonement you shall sound a horn all through your land. So you shall consecrate the fiftieth year and proclaim a release throughout the land to all its inhabitants. It shall be a jubilee for you, and each of you shall return to his own property, and each of you shall return to his family. You shall have the fiftieth year as a jubilee, you shall not sow, nor harvest its aftergrowth, nor gather grapes from its untrimmed vines. For it is a jubilee, it shall be holy to you. You shall eat its produce from the field. On this year of jubilee each of you shall return to his own property. Furthermore, if you make a sale to your friend, or buy from your friend's hand, you shall not wrong one another. Corresponding to the number of years after the jubilee, you shall buy from your friend, he is to sell to you according to the number of years of crops. In proportion to a greater number of years you shall increase its price, and in proportion to fewer years you shall decrease its price, because it is the number of crops that he is selling to you. So you shall not wrong one another, but you shall fear your God, for I am the Lord your God. You shall therefore follow my statutes and keep my judgments so as to carry them out, so that you may live securely on the land. Then the land will yield its produce, so that you can eat your fill and live securely on it. But if you say, What are we going to eat in the seventh year if we do not sow and nor gather in our produce? Then I will so order my blessing for you in the sixth year that it will bring forth the produce for three years. When you are sowing the eighth year, you can still eat old things from the produce, eating the old until the ninth year when its produce comes in. The land, moreover, shall not be sold permanently, because the land is mine, for you are only strangers and residents with me. So for every piece of your property, you are to provide for the redemption of the land. If a fellow countryman of yours becomes so poor that he sells part of his property, then his closest redeemer is to come and buy back what his relative has sold. Or in case someone has no redeemer, but recovers to find sufficient means for its redemption. Then he shall calculate the years since its sale and refund the balance to the man to whom he sold it, and so return to his property. But if he has not found sufficient means to get it back for himself, then what he has sold shall remain in the hands of its purchaser until the year of jubilee, but at the jubilee it shall revert, so that he may return to his property. Likewise, if a man sells a dwelling house in a walled city, then his redemption right remains valid until a full year after its sale, his right of redemption lasts a full year. But if it is not bought back for him within the space of a full year, then the house that is in the walled city passes permanently to its purchaser throughout his generations, it does not revert in the jubilee. 
The houses of the villages, however, which have no surrounding wall, shall be regarded as open fields, they have redemption rights and revert in the jubilee. As for the cities of the Levites, the Levites have a permanent right of redemption for the houses of the cities which are their possession. What, therefore, belongs to the Levites may be redeemed, and a house sale in the city of this possession reverts in the jubilee, because the houses of the cities of the Levites are their possession among the sons of Israel. But pasture fields of their cities shall not be sold, for that is their permanent possession. Now in case a countryman of yours becomes poor and his means among you falter, then you are to sustain him, like a stranger or a resident, so that he may live with you. Do not take any kind of interest from him, but fear your God, so that your countrymen may live with you. You shall not give him your silver at interest, nor your food for profit. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt to give you the land of Canaan, and to be your God. Now if a countryman of yours becomes so poor with regard to you that he sells himself to you, you shall not subject him to a slave service. He shall be with you as a hired worker, as if he were a foreign resident, he shall serve with you up to the year of Jubilee. He shall then leave you, he and his sons with him, and shall go back to his family, so that he may return to the property of his forefathers. For they are my servants whom I brought out from the land of Egypt, they are not to be sold in a slave sale. You shall not rule over him with severity, but are to revere your God. As for your male and female slaves whom you may have, you may acquire male and female slaves from the pagan nations that are around you. You may also acquire them from the sons of the foreign residents who reside among you, and from their families who are with you, whom they will have produced in your land, they also may become your possession. You may also pass them on as an inheritance to your sons after you, to receive as a possession, you can use them as permanent slaves. But in respect to your countrymen, the sons of Israel, you shall not rule with severity over one another. Now if the means of a stranger or of a foreign resident with you become sufficient, and a countryman of yours becomes poor in relation to him and sells himself to a stranger who is residing with you, or to the descendants of a stranger's family, then he shall have redemption right after he has been sold. One of his brothers may redeem him. Or his uncle, or his uncle's son may redeem him, or one of his blood relatives from his family may redeem him, or if he prospers, he may redeem himself. He then, with his purchaser, shall calculate from the year when he sold himself to him up to the year of Jubilee, and the price of his sale shall correspond to the number of years calculated. It is like the days of a hired worker that he will be with him. If there are still many years remaining, he shall refund part of his purchase price in proportion to them for his own redemption. But if few years remain until the year of Jubilee, he shall so calculate with him. In proportion to his years he is to refund the amount for his redemption. He shall be with him like a worker hired year by year, he shall not rule over him with severity in your sight. Even if he is not redeemed by these means, he shall still leave in the year of Jubilee, he and his sons with him. For the sons of Israel are my servants, they are my servants whom I brought out from the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. You shall not make for yourselves idols, nor shall you set up for yourselves a carved image or a memorial stone, nor shall you place a figured stone in your land to bow down to it, for I am the Lord your God. You shall keep my Sabbaths and revere my sanctuary, I am the Lord. If you walk in my statutes and keep my commandments so as to carry them out, then I shall give you rains in their season, so that the land will yield its produce and the trees of the field will bear their fruit. Indeed, your threshing season will last for you until grape gathering, and grape gathering will last until sowing time. So you will eat your food to the full and live securely in your land. 
I shall also grant peace in the land, so that you may lie down, with no one to make you afraid. I shall also eliminate harmful animals from the land, and no sword will pass through your land. Instead, you will chase your enemies, and they will fall before you by the sword. Five of you will chase a hundred, and a hundred of you will chase ten thousand, and your enemies will fall before you by the sword. So I will turn toward you and make you fruitful and multiply you, and I will confirm my covenant with you. And you will eat the old supply, and clear out the old because of the new. Moreover, I will make my dwelling among you, and my soul will not reject you. I will also walk among you and be your God, and you shall be my people. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt so that you would not be their slaves, and I broke your yoke and made you walk erect. But if you do not obey me and do not carry out all these commandments, 15 if, instead, you reject my statutes, and if your soul loathes my ordinances so as not to carry out all my commandments, but rather to break my covenant. I, in turn, will do this to you, I will summon a sudden terror against you, consumption and fever that will make the eyes fail and the soul languish, also, you will sow your seed uselessly, for your enemies will eat it. And I will set my face against you so that you will be defeated before your enemies, and those who hate you will rule over you, and you will flee when no one is pursuing you. If also after these things you do not obey me, then I will punish you seven times more for your sins. I will also break down your pride of power, and I will make your sky like iron and your earth like bronze. Your strength will be consumed uselessly, for your land will not yield its produce and the trees of the land will not yield their fruit. Yet if you show hostility toward me and are unwilling to obey me, I will increase the plague on you seven times according to your sins. I will also let loose among you the animals of the field, which will deprive you of your children and eliminate your cattle, and reduce your number so that your roads become deserted. And if by these things you do not learn your lesson regarding me, but you show hostility toward me, then I in turn will show hostility toward you, and I, even I, will strike you seven times for your sins. I will also bring upon you a sword which will execute vengeance for the covenant, and when you gather together into your cities, I will send a plague among you, so that you will be handed over to the enemy. When I break your staff of bread, ten women will bake your bread in one oven, and they will bring back your bread in rationed amounts, so that you will eat and not be satisfied. Yet if in spite of this you do not obey me, but act with hostility against me, 28 then I will act with wrathful hostility against you, and I for my part will punish you seven times for your sins. Further, you will eat the flesh of your sons, and you will eat the flesh of your daughters. I then will destroy your high places, and cut down your incense altars, and pile your remains on the remains of your idols, for my soul will loathe you. I will turn your cities into ruins as well and make your sanctuaries desolate, and I will not smell your soothing aromas. And I will make the land desolate so that your enemies who settle in it will be appalled at it. You, however, I will scatter among the nations, and I will draw out a sword after you, as your land becomes desolate and your cities become ruins. Then the land will restore its Sabbaths all the days of the desolation, while you are in your enemy's land, then the land will rest and restore its Sabbaths. 35 All the days of its desolation it will have the rest which it did not have on your Sabbaths, while you were living on it. As for those among you who are left, I will also bring despair into their hearts in the lands of their enemies. And the sound of a scattered leaf will chase them, and even when no one is pursuing they will flee as though from the sword, and they will fall. They will then stumble over each other as if running from the sword, although no one is pursuing, and you will have no strength to stand before your enemies. 38 Instead, you will perish among the nations, and your enemy's land will consume you.
So those of you who may be left will rot away because of their wrongdoing in the lands of your enemies, and also because of the wrongdoing of their forefathers they will rot away with them. But if they confess their wrongdoing and the wrongdoing of their forefathers, in their unfaithfulness which they committed against me, and also in their acting with hostility against me. I also was acting with hostility against them, to bring them into the land of their enemies, or if their uncircumcised heart is humbled so that they then make amends for their wrongdoing. Then I will remember my covenant with Jacob, and I will remember also my covenant with Isaac, and my covenant with Abraham as well, and I will remember the land. For the land will be abandoned by them, and will restore its Sabbaths while it is made desolate without them. They, meanwhile, will be making amends for their wrongdoing, because they rejected my ordinances and their soul loathed my statutes. Yet in spite of this, when they are in the land of their enemies, I will not reject them, nor will I so loathe them as to destroy them, breaking my covenant with them, for I am the Lord their God. But I will remember for them the covenant with their ancestors, whom I brought out of the land of Egypt in the sight of the nations, so that I might be their God. I am the Lord. These are the statutes and ordinances and laws which the Lord established between himself and the sons of Israel through Moses on Mount Sinai. Again, the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the sons of Israel and say to them, When someone makes an explicit vow, he shall be valued according to your assessment of persons belonging to the Lord. If your assessment is of a male from twenty years even to sixty years old, then your assessment shall be fifty shekels of silver, by the shekel of the sanctuary. Or if the person is a female, then your assessment shall be thirty shekels. And if the person is from five years even to twenty years old, then your assessment for a male shall be twenty shekels, and for a female, ten shekels. But if the person is from a month even up to five years old, then your assessment shall be five shekels of silver for a male, and for a female your assessment shall be three shekels of silver. If the person is from sixty years old and upward, if a male, then your assessment shall be fifteen shekels, and for a female, ten shekels. But if he is poorer than your assessment, then he shall be presented before the priest, and the priest shall assess him, according to the means of the one who vowed, the priest shall assess him. Now if it is an animal of the kind that one can present as an offering to the Lord, any such animal that one gives to the Lord shall be holy. He shall not replace it nor exchange it, a good for a bad, or a bad for a good, yet if he does exchange animal for animal, then both it and its substitute shall become holy. If, however, it is any unclean animal of the kind which one does not present as an offering to the Lord, then he shall place the animal before the priest. And the priest shall assess it as either good or bad, as you, the priest, assess it, so shall it be. But if he should ever want to redeem it, then he shall add a fifth of it to your assessment. Now if someone consecrates his house as holy to the Lord, then the priest shall assess it as either good or bad, as the priest assesses it, so shall it stand. Yet if the one who consecrates it should want to redeem his house, then he shall add a fifth of your assessment price to it, so that it may be his. Again, if someone consecrates to the Lord part of the field of his own property, then your assessment shall be proportionate to the seed needed for it, a homer of barley seed at fifty shekels of silver. If he consecrates his field as of the year of jubilee, according to your assessment it shall stand. If he consecrates his field after the jubilee, however, then the priest shall calculate the price for him proportionate to the years that are left until the year of jubilee, and it shall be deducted from your assessment. If the one who consecrates it should ever want to redeem the field, then he shall add a fifth of your assessment price to it, so that it may belong to him. Yet if he does not redeem the field, but has sold the field to another person, it may no longer be redeemed. 
And when it reverts in the jubilee, the field shall be holy to the Lord, like a field banned from secular use, it shall be for the priest as his property. Or if he consecrates to the Lord a field which he has bought, which is not a part of the field of his own property, then the priest shall calculate for him the amount of your assessment up to the year of jubilee, and he shall on that day give your assessment as holy to the Lord. In the year of jubilee the field shall return to the one from whom he bought it, to whom the possession of the land belongs. Every assessment of yours, moreover, shall be by the shekel of the sanctuary. The shekel shall be twenty giras. However, a firstborn among animals, which as a firstborn belongs to the Lord, no one may consecrate, whether ox or sheep, it is the Lord's. But if it is among the unclean animals, then he shall redeem it according to your assessment and add to it a fifth of it, and if it is not redeemed, then it shall be sold according to your assessment. Nevertheless, anything which someone sets apart to the Lord for destruction out of all that he has, of man or animal or of the field of his own property, shall not be sold nor redeemed. Anything set apart for destruction is most holy to the Lord. No one who may have been set apart among mankind shall be ransomed, he must be put to death. Now all the tithe of the land, of the seed of the land or of the fruit of the tree, is the Lord's, it is holy to the Lord. If, therefore, someone should ever want to redeem part of his tithe, he shall add to it a fifth of it. For every tenth part of herd or flock, whatever passes under the rod, the tenth one shall be holy to the Lord. He is not to be concerned whether it is good or bad, nor shall he exchange it, yet if he does exchange it, then both it and its substitute shall become holy. It shall not be redeemed. These are the commandments which the Lord commanded Moses for the sons of Israel on Mount Sinai.